This is Revival of America broadcast with evangelist Leroy Jenkins. In 1960, Leroy Jenkins was a businessman in Atlanta, Georgia. At that time, a near-fatal accident occurred in his life. With the knowledge that death was inevitable, Leroy Jenkins came face to face with a realization that only God could help him. Allowing God to take over in his life, this young man experienced the power of God through conversion and miraculous healing. Since that conversion and healing of evangelist Leroy Jenkins, countless thousands have been converted and healed. Many times, as he stands before the people who gather in great arenas, coliseums, and tent cathedrals all across America, the supernatural gift of God enables him to look into the lives of those who stand before him. He sees their sickness, their problems, and their burdens. Many times, he tells them things that happened years ago that only God could know. This is the gift of the word of knowledge. Listen as we take you into the crusade, now in progress. I want to tell you the greatest gift and something that you and I are going to do. And I want to prove to you that God's gift is the greatest gift. When God gives you a gift, it's a greater gift than anything that money could buy. Money cannot heal your crippled foot. If I had put a a thousand dollar bill across your foot, it would still be crippled. Right? But if I put my hand on your foot and I say the prayer of faith, then that's worth more if that works. So the gift is greater than the money. The gift is greater than anything that could be wrong with this gentleman here. Right, sir? The prayer of faith, I like that when it says the prayer of faith. Not just the prayer, but the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord will raise them up again. Not just a a prayer, but the prayer of faith. If you're here this morning and, and you have a sickness in your body, surely you would go to a doctor. And do everything in your power that you could do. And if that has not worked, then the prayer of faith is greater. The prayer of faith is greater than anything that you can have. I watched a TV program this morning and I saw a man. He was this much taller than me. But his legs wouldn't work. For many years this man had been like a vegetable. His legs had pierced away because he couldn't use them. And I don't know how I picked that man up. I was watching it this morning and he weighed twice as much as I did and I didn't pick him up like this I picked him up under his arms that's almost impossible this man weighed like 300 pounds and I thought my goodness alive I didn't do that I could have never reached down under a man's arm and lifted him up And I thought I surely had to be in the spirit then to pick that big man up. But when I put him down, something happened. And suddenly he realized that he could walk. And I tried to get him to speak. He said, I, I, I'm, I, I can't say anything now. I'm, I'm too carried away. I'm too much in the spirit. He was so happy because he had been in pain all those years. And watching himself just dry away. So what was more important? The faith that was extended to this man? Reverend King, you was there. That was in Michigan. We wondered how those thousands of people were there, but they were there. We hardly could get there. But there again, people have enough faith that they can do anything. I watch people come to this cathedral when we could hardly get around the house to get in here, and they come from Detroit, Chicago. How'd you get here? We drove. 
And people will do what they want to do. Don't forget it. People will be what they want to be. You can be whatever you want to be. You can be a failure or you can be successful. You can sit around and gripe and complain all of your life. And your life will become nothing. Or you can start out this morning and be happy. Forget about the way you feel about me or the way I feel about you. And say, look, it's my life and I've got to live it and I've got to be happy. Every moment of your life counts. Every one of them. And you've got to realize that. You have to know one thing, if you know this morning that you are not right with God. If you know that you have ought against somebody or your brother, your sister, whatever. If you'll make that right, you can lift up like a feather. You can begin to float around this morning and have joy and happiness and peace of mind. (laughs) Nothing will matter to you. You'll want to live. You won't want to die. You won't be miserable. You'll feel joy in your mind. And no matter what the troubles and problems might be, you'll look over them and you'll smile. And you'll be glad that you said yes. Most people in the world make themselves miserable. They adopt misery. They ask for it. They want it. Because they do not know what joy and happiness is. There are some people that would be miserable no matter what you did to them. And there's people that are going to be happy no matter what you do. There's some people that just realize what joy and happiness is. The other day I put myself in Oral Roberts' place when his daughter was killed. And I thought that is terrible. And it just bothered me so much not because of Rebecca but because of the grief that was left behind with her mother and father and I thought here's a man teaching faith happiness and joy but look what he's been confronted with and I realized that I have children that could have happened to me it can happen to you but here's a man of faith a man that believes in God but he had to go through this problem So that was a lesson to you to know that if Brother Roberts have to do it, so will you. Don't give up God. Supposing he said, I quit because my daughter and my son-in-law was taken and these children were left behind. What kind of God is that? But no, this man didn't say that. He had to be strong. He's an example. He had to let people realize that tragedies happen even to people like he and I. And they will happen to you. And the reason it was publicized, so many millions of people knew it because they knew Oral Roberts. There's people dying every second. You don't know about it. They're dying. They don't have a name. Nobody knows actually who they are because it's just a person that died. But they're dying every second. That one could be you. It could be me. And the hatred you have in your heart against anyone, why should you have it? Because you could die tomorrow. So what you have in your heart against anyone is not worth it. Because you cannot go to heaven with hatred in your heart against anyone. You cannot have the joy of God in your life and your heart if you have all against your brother. I have enough reason and I have reason to have doubt and unbelief in my heart against people, but I don't. It seems to vanish and go. I have a reason to have hatred in my heart if I wanted to say I did because I've had a lot of things done against me. And it isn't easy for me to let it go. It isn't easy to really to forgive it and forget it. And it still comes back to your mind every now and then. You never feel the same no matter what you say. And if I haven't done anything to you, what have I done to you if I have? If you're there judging me this morning, what did I do to you to make you do it? Have I done anything to you or somebody told you something? I haven't done it to you, then why bother with it? So therefore, hold no art against your brother or your sister. If you have out against anyone this morning, ask God's forgiveness. 
Say, I ask you, God, to forgive me. And go to that one. Go to them and tell them. If you have ought, go to them. They, I have ought against you. I have this against you. I want to find out about it. And you can become friends if both of you are Christians. I don't understand how people can say that they are happy and full of joy and peace of mind when they sit around with a faith so long and sad. Everybody should be happy. Everybody should be full of joy. You should be thinking of a nice big old dinner after you leave here today. <laughs> you ought to be thinking, oh, what am I going to do to help somebody today? I want every one of you people to stand to your feet. Come on. And I want you to clap your hands and sing everybody. We'll be happy over there. Come on, group. I want to teach you this song if you don't know it. Sing and shout His praises. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy. Will be happy over there. We will shout and sing His praises. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing God's praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Oh, everybody will be happy. We'll be happy over there. We will shout and sing God's praise. Everybody will be happy over there. Everybody will be happy over there. Thank you. Everybody is beautiful. Everything and everybody is beautiful. Amen. Let's lift our hands up and praise God for His goodness. Aren't you glad to be alive this morning? Amen. Praise Aren't God. Aren't you glad? Thank God. My, there's a, a, a spirit of joy and happiness in this place Amen. and everybody in here should just be up, bubbling over with joy and especially the joy of knowing you're alive this morning Praise God. knowing that God cares for you thank God thank God as I had them to do in the island, I want you to reach over and touch your neighbor and say, God love you and God heal you. Little do you know how God can answer that prayer. <laughs> you know what? You, you might not believe this. You might not believe this. A, a moment ago, just a moment ago, God told me there was a person over there that had cancer that he just healed. You've already been to the hospital and been operated on, but it came back. Yes, ma'am, right over there in that bleacher, right here. You are healed by the power of God. It will never bother you again. Thank God. Sir, God just healed you of your diabetic condition. Healed by the power of God. Lift your hands and praise Him for it. Thank you. Lady over here, you have a lump in your left breast. 
No, ma'am, not now. It's already gone. You, it just left. You'll never find it again as long as you live. You're healed by the power of God. Let these people come on through. Father, touch this lady. In the name of Jesus. What are you catching my hand for? You're not going to fall? Let it be granted in Jesus' name. Stand here, Usher. These are the ones I want right here, the big ones. God, I ask that you heal this young lady that she brought with this kidney infection in Jesus' name. Yes, it has. Father, touch this woman in Jesus' name and let strength begin to come back into her legs in Jesus' name. Father, touch this brother in the name of Jesus Christ. Be thou made whole in Jesus' name. Touch this brother for thy glory. Touch this man in the name of Christ. Can't talk? Father, loose this man, this throat, this tongue, in Jesus' name. Where are you from, sir? Detroit. Where? Detroit. Go praising God. In Jesus' name. Lady, let it be. Let it be. I want everybody to get ready for something great. Let it be in Jesus' name. God, heal this woman of this cancer in Jesus' name. Little girl, be thou made whole. She can't hear? Did you say she can't hear? Sound like she's doing something. Come here, little girl. How long has she been deaf? She's born that way. She was born deaf. How old is she? She's uh, five. five. Five years old? Hold this. There's no use of me praying again. You hear me? Huh? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. I told you. Let it be. They'll follow her life. Lady, be thou made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. Lady, be healed by thy powers of God. Lady, in Jesus' name, let it be. Sir, let it be. Thank you. Thank you. Lady, quit worrying about things. You are right. Huh? You are right. I brought my daughter and had you to pray for her and brought her back to Detroit. And she went in college and got A and the psychiatrist started to commit her. And then he got together and said he didn't know what was wrong with her. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you, sir. Sir, bless you in Jesus' name. God heal this man. God bless you. Jesus' name. All right, sir. Lady, I'm so glad to see you not on that walker. I'm glad to see you walking. Isn't that great? I am an artist. I would like to dedicate my pen brush to the Lord. It's all is. Thank you. Isn't that beautiful to see a woman came in here crippled and walking out? Praise God, had cancer. Lady, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. God bless you. God heal this man of this hernia in Jesus' name. Touch this lady. Touch this woman for thy glory. Oh, praise God. Amen. Mm-hmm. Behold the star This heart of mine Is made to wonder My poor mind Cannot cry It's a ray But the hand I spent them there All across the white heaven Had a plan When he made them that way No, no To him All the great Hidden secrets 
I fear not the darkness when my flame grows dim. I know not what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. It's a secret known only to him. In this world with fear and doubt. Mm. Yes, hi, Ronnie. God bless you and heal you in Jesus' name. He's beautiful, ma'am. I have to hold. I pray for you all the time you in my way. And I pray every night, three times a day. You prayed for me the whole time I was gone. Well, the only reason you. So you pray for me where I'll be able to pray for you. Right? I pray for the power invested in you by the Savior, by Jesus Christ. And I love both of you. And you're all that I have to depend on. And I'm, I'm a lot better. I can tell these people, when I first came here, I had uh, sugar diabetes. Doctors, five doctors had condemned me. And I came here that night, there's a woman back there can speak for me. The next day, I went to the doctor, he, and they take an x-ray, he said, we can't find anything. I said, well, why do you lie to me? <laughs> yes, I was, I was sore, I didn't like it. And uh, then, they got another x-ray, and they found something else down in here. And they operated on me twice. And you remember you found it where the last time I was here you said they was going to emphysema and uh, tum uh, tumor here. Yeah, I, I still have that uh, pain that don't, every now and then it comes. It won't go, alright let's get rid of it, come on. Father, heal this brother. And let this pain go and never return again. And Jesus, thank God. Lift up your hand now and praise God for it. Amen. That how old are you? 84 years old. 84 years old. <laughs> uh oh, the king went one way and he went the other. Thank you, Lord. You always have to come back for a shot, don't you? <laughs> well, I know where to come. That's one thing. <laughs> I don't miss anything. Thank God. God bless you, sir. And God bless you, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Isn't it great? Anytime something happens to him, he always comes to me. And I always leave rejoicing and walking, praising God at no extra expense. You know, if doctors would uh, heal you and then charge you, you wouldn't mind paying them. It does get discouraging. You go to the doctor and they operate on you and charge you $5,000 and turn around and say, I'm sorry, there's nothing else I can do for you. I want everyone here that has a friend or someone that's sick that you want God to touch for you tonight. Who knows? This might be their night. Bow your heads with me and put them in your mind. And we pray for it right now to happen. And we thank God for it. And we already, we, we prayed for it, we thank Him, we believe it. And now it's done. Subject of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. When the storm 
of life is raging Stand by me When the storm of life is raging Stand by me When I do the best I can And my friends don't understand Thou who rulest wind and water Stand by me When I'm facing tribulation Stand by me When I'm facing tribulation Stand by me when the host of hell is in And my head begins to fail Thou know all about it Stand